All right, good afternoon and welcome to John Box Watercolor. Today we're gonna to be painting a scene from the outback in Australia. We've got a little bit of a landscape set up here, but before we get started, if you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up, and if you like what you see, consider subscribing. I'm gonna have three to four new videos coming out each week. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna put our reference photo over here on the right just so you all can take a look. It's a fairly simple scene. The most dominating shape in the photo is going to be this large tree here. I've kept the sketch pretty true to form. I did add a little house back here and kind of change the shape of the mountain a little bit. But other than that, it's going to stick pretty true to reference. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I've sprayed my palette here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is get a little water here on the actual paper. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to take some dirty water. I've got a flat brush here and I'm just going to kind of make a couple of marks here. And I want to leave some white gaps in there that are going to become our some kind of cloud shapes. And pre wetting that paper should also help in keeping our painting um, light. Maintaining that light in our sky is always important. You never want to get too dark. Um, we're going to keep it on the cooler side, so I'm going to put a little water here just to kind of wash down some of that gray pigment. Let's grab a little cobalt, maybe a little lavender just to mix things up. And let's just pull it through the sky there. And the other great thing about having it pre-wet like that is you're going to get these really nice soft edges and you can kind of just let the paper do the painting for you. It's uh, it's kind of relaxing actually. It's a little bit of some stress-free painting. Everybody likes that. So coming down here towards the bottom, that looks good. Okay, I'm going to give that a minute to dry while we're working here. And I'm going to just dab off some of the water here on the bottom. I don't want that to run down too much into our foreground, which uh, in contrast to our cool sky, we're going to keep fairly warm. All right, so let's come down here, put a little bit of water there just to kind of bring some of those darker colors down and give us something to work with. I'm going to be using a lot of this yellow ochre here, a little burnt sienna. All right, let's Let's just touch it, and I know it looks really strong there, and we're just going to pull right through. Okay, that's not too bad. A little darker than I would have liked, so I'm going to take some water just to bring it down. Let's pick up some of that yellow ochre here. And I'm going to be dragging that brush somewhat quickly through our scene here because I'm hoping to leave some little gaps of light in there just to kind of keep things interesting. And we may turn those later into, they could be the tops of rocks or hay bales. All kinds of things could be out here in this sort of farm area. All right, just kind of sticking to yellow ochre for now. I did darken it up with a little bit of that burnt sienna. And as we get down towards the bottom of our page, we're gonna darken things up. As always, if you've seen any of my other videos, we always want to be doing that. So I'm pretty dark down here at the bottom. All right, perfect. Okay, got my paper towel. I'm gonna to come back through here and we're gonna blot our sky just a little bit there. Okay, and we'll leave that kind of hard edge on the bottom and kind of soften it up up top. This looks pretty good. And I'm just going to dab lightly where these cattle are. Lighten that up just a touch. Okay, now, while this is still wet, A, I've got a little bit of a white streak here at the bottom I need to cover up. But, <clears throat> while this is still wet, I want to come in here and add a little bit of detail here. So I'm gonna get some fairly thick paint, keep it on the warmer side, just pulling down some cobalt and ultramarine just to neutralize it a little bit. And let's see how that runs there. I'm just gonna kinda of dab my brush 
through this area, especially along this backdrop here. These could be some trees and bushes. And I'm just gonna let that wet paper spread out the paint there, okay? Now let's grab a smaller brush, something a little warmer. Get that stand in there. And these are just some kind of texture lines, you know? All right. And with that, less is gonna be more. So I don't wanna overdo it, just a little bit of texture, a little bit of extra color on this first wash to get things going. But other than that, we're gonna keep it pretty simple. So I think we're pretty good here. I'm going to let this dry and we're gonna come back and start our second wash. All right, we are back. This is now completely dry and we're gonna start our second wash. So I'm going to spray the paper just a little bit. And as always, we're gonna start with the objects that are furthest in the distance and move towards our viewpoint. So I've got this sort of mountain shape here in the back and what I wanna do, I wanna keep it a cooler color. And I also, I know I often talk about, especially when I'm working on buildings, varying your colors and tones as you're working through the shape. In this instance, I wanna keep this this tone and this value fairly singular. So I wanna have a pretty decent wash here so that I don't have to keep mixing things. The reason that I wanna keep this all one tone is because objects that are very far in the distance are typically not going to have much deviation in them um, from our viewpoint. If you look at a mountain range in the distance, it's really going to have very little detail. Um, and the reason is just it's, it's too far away. So I wanna keep this shape strong, but I want to make sure that it is really just one tone and one color. And I got a little bit of a, a cooler tone there on the right, and that's okay. Now, again, I wanna keep this pretty strong. I'm working this down here. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, just to get a little bit of that atmospheric effect, I'm going to give it a little bit more of a spray on the right here and see if we can't soften that up. I'll do the same thing in this general area and I'll most likely come back with my paper towel and just do a little bit of dabbing as well. For now, I'm gonna leave this be and I'm gonna keep working through the painting. So. If we've got our mountain all the way in the back, we should have some objects that are a bit closer. All right, so I want to mix up something pretty thick here. Again, I want to make sure I'm getting that contrast against this very, very light and bright um, foreground we have. And I'm just going to kind of dot the bottom of our our kind of mountain range area here. Being careful to miss the roof of this house because I'm going to be, I'm going to be cutting that out. And as always, I'm leaving some little gaps of light here along that ridge line. And it actually may be, that mountain may be a little too wet. So I need to probably bring that pigment in there fairly strong. But those little gaps of light, they could be roofs of buildings, they could be other little farmhouses and things in the distance. All right, so I'm just gonna bring my paper towel in here and try to absorb some of that water. If it's too wet, it may look dark now, but it's gonna lighten too much. And I want us to be able to have some dark defined shapes here. But I'll tell you what, I do kinda like this sort of misting effect here. And this is what I think I'm gonna do on the top of this area here. I'm just gonna kind of lighten an area on the mountain. And that should help give us a little bit of an, an atmospheric effect. Okay. All right, now let's darken up that paint again. And let's, let's come back in here. And as I work my way down, I'm getting darker and darker. And I'm really just I'm really just kind of dabbing my brush and sort of poking it. I'm not I'm not doing a whole lot of uh of 
brushwork really. I am going to get it dark around the roof of this house so that I can use that, that darkness to bring out our roof here. And I'll show you what I mean here in just a moment. Just got my smaller brush here. I'm going to pull down some vertical lines. These could be trees or other livestock, all sorts of things. All right. Now, let's paint this little house here. I'm going to use my white paint here. This is just Chinese white. And if you've used white watercolor paint before, you will know that it's not really white. Or I should say, when you put it on the paper, it doesn't exactly show up as white. It's going to show up as more of a creamy color. And it can be really nice if you've got an object that is perhaps white, but it's in shade or it's, it's not in direct light. It can sometimes give a really nice effect. And so I'm going to be using that on the body of our building here. Oops. Just pull straight from there. All right. And the idea is that <clears throat> I want to try to have that rooftop really pop out there. All right. And so we've got our house. And now what I want to do is darken the bottom of it. Right, we would have some type of shadow or something there along the bottom. And I'm going to do the same thing along the roof line. And I want to be careful because I just painted this. I want to be careful that it doesn't run too much. And so what I did was a quick dab there and I already can see that it, that's running too much for my liking. So I'm going to need to let that dry just a bit before I work in that roof shadow and a few other things. Now, while I'm over here, what I may do is I'm going to take the back of one of my brushes and just scratch what could be a little chimney or something back there. And I'll probably add a couple of vertical lines in the distance as well, vertical and horizontal. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to just clean that up a little bit. And we're going to come back and work on it. And I'm almost tempted. I want to, I think I want to darken it a little bit. Yeah, I'll still use that creamy white color, but I'll, I'll mix it with that warmer color we were working with. And I will come back and work on that in just a moment. Okay. I'm liking the way our backdrop is looking. What I think I want to have us do now is let's work on our cattle. Well, we're waiting on a few things to dry. In that reference photo, they're almost, I think they are completely black. They're not like a, um, uh, like a dairy cow or something. They're, they're more of, uh, I don't know if it's just the breeds of them. I don't really know a whole lot about uh, cattle and that sort of thing. So if you do, you can comment and let me know why all the cattle in that photo are all black. Um, and I'm trying to keep it pretty simple here. I, I don't want to have to draw every little detail. I'm going to pull down just some suggestions of some vertical um, limbs here, but I'm not going to pull them all the way down. What I'm going to try to do is use my paper towel to kind of almost blend them down so that it gives this, like, see, that's too long. And that's something that I will see a lot of beginner artists do is they'll pull this leg down and leave it. But if we're really looking at this scene, or if you look at that reference photo from the beginning, their legs almost blend into the grass. They, they soften up. And so I want to try to give that impression as well. And you'll notice here for my cattle, how abstract they are. I didn't, you know, draw a bunch of tails and and other things. I kept it, I kept it fairly simple, but it may be simple, but it's fairly easy to know what you have here. You might not know that they're cows, but you definitely know it's a livestock of some kind. Okay. I'm just taking along here and just touching the lower half of their bodies to 
kind of lighten them up and hopefully give somewhat of a, a softer impression on their lower halves. All right, so now while we've got some dark paint out here, let's go back to our house and let's see if it wants to let us do the roof line. And so I did a dot, it didn't spread too much. I'm just dotting along the top there, right below. There we go, that looks pretty good. And I will do a little something there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some of that burnt sienna, mix it with what we've got there. And again, I want to continue to sharpen and add some more defined lines and things back here. Remember, as things get closer to us, they're going to become darker and more defined. And so I'm just using this little brush and just abstracting some things along the base of that border back there, just to show that we've got some depth going on here. And I'm also going to put in a window or a, I guess it, I guess it's more of a door. All right. And while that's still wet, I'll put a little bit, a little bit more work over there. Okay. And it's just starting to come together. So what I need to be working on next is going to be this large tree shape. And this is going to be the, the key of our entire painting. Now you'll notice that in my sketch, I really just drew the trunk in kind of a, a little limb separation here. I didn't draw a bunch of branches and scribble and do all this stuff. We're going to be abstracting almost all of that. And so I don't want to have pencil marks and things up here to kind of get in the way or lock me into an idea of where something needs to go. We're just going to work on this and we're going to feel it out. All right, so let's start working on it. Now, what I want to do is I want to have, I'm thinking uh, probably a warmer color is going to be best for these, these branches here. And I also want to have, if I can, a little bit of, I guess a little bit of variation in the color of our, our leaves and things. So how you want to do this is I've got a pretty thick pile of paint here, a pile of paint. I don't know. I've, I've got a pretty thick uh, grouping. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the brush. I don't want to use it vertically like this. I'm going to press it down so it sort of comes into this sort of shape here. And then I'm going to use it on its side. And I want to get, that's exactly what I'm looking for. When you're using rough paper like this, you're going to get these sort of scrapes with the brush. And that's what's going to allow us to give a realistic uh, impression of foliage. But also, it's, it's fairly simple as well. And if you've watched any of my other videos, I like to paint simply. Right? If I don't have to work hard at, at getting the impression I want, well, I would rather not. All right, so again, just using the side of that brush there and trying to kind of vary some areas where there might be more leaves coming out. And we're just going to slowly build into a shape here. And you'll notice I've picked up and, and warmed up that, that paint mixture I have there. And we're just going to, I'll put something maybe a little bit lower there. And now that I've got the basic idea of some foliage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush here, thicken this up again, it's a little bit more watery, and I'm going to come and dab inside of those foliage shapes that I've made to get that kind of variation in color and darkness that we see when we look at uh, trees and things. All right. I'll tell you what I'm also going to do. I'm going to give this a little bit of a spray, help that color run a little bit, and I'm just going to start working my way through. And there's not really a right or wrong way to do this. I'm just touching the brush, letting the paint run a little bit, and 
I'm just looking to, again, we're just looking to vary the tone inside of these, these foliage bunches here. Now, I will say that I am putting the darker areas on the lower right-hand side of each foliage clump because I'm gonna have my shadows going from left to right. So uh, I guess there is a little bit of strategy in, in where you darken um, just to try and maintain that, that, light, um, that light direction, all right? And I love how it was a little softer down here and it's kind of bled out. I think that looks nice. Towards the center of the tree, I want things to be darker and, and thicker here. But again, I'm really trying to use the side of my brush there. Okay. And I'm gonna pull that out just a little bit there. It kind of help frame over the top of our cattle. All right, let's go back in. And you wanna be darkening it a bit more than you think you should. I will say that. Remember, this is watercolor, it will dry lighter. Again, I'm gonna stick to the lower right hand areas of those, those foliage clumps. And in a moment, we're gonna start adding some limbs. And again, I'm just touching with the brush up and down. I'm not actually making strokes inside of, of these, um, these brush marks I've made. Just dabbing the paint in. Okay. And you know what might be fun is maybe on the left here, since we're gonna have light coming from the left, I wonder if I just touch in a little bit of that, that yellow ochre to brighten up the upper left-hand sides of our branches and, and trees, okay. Yeah, I think that looks nice actually. And don't be afraid to go straight from your, your, uh, your little paler square to the, the, uh, the tree itself. So many times I see beginners where they just, they, no matter what, they've got to come back into the, uh, into their main pails and mix everything with water. And you do not have to do that. All right, I wanna maintain some of that pure pigment. Okay, I think that tree is coming along very nicely. All right, now let's start adding some limbs. And I do have somewhat of a, a cool tip for if you're painting limbs. Um, put the brush, and this goes for limbs that are in the top of your tree. The one thing you'll notice about <clears throat> trees, plant life, a lot of things in landscapes is how abstract they are. And you don't want to have these straight, perfect little lines everywhere. So what I like to do is actually put the brush that I'm going to use for my limbs in my non-dominant hand, my left hand. And what it's going to do is it's going to help add just a little bit of, of kind of wiggle and flare to things that my right might not be able to do so naturally just because of the the lack of control in my non-dominant hand and <clears throat> i'm going to try to just i'm just moving my brush here i'm looking for little gaps in the foliage where i can come through and have a couple of lines just just showing there I'm letting the brush move freely here too. I'm not, I'm not thinking of any limb shapes. All I'm thinking in my head is move quickly and just uh, make some dark wiggly lines. And that is, that is really it here. Now, as I get towards the main body of the tree, I am gonna need a little bit more control. And so I'll grab this brush and just draw a couple of limbs with my right hand, okay? Now, let's move down and let's work this trunk here. I'm gonna want this trunk to be fairly dark, but I'm gonna add a little lavender here. I'm gonna cool it down. You'll often see 
that bark, if you go look at the bark of a tree, it's almost a gray color. We always tend to make it brown, but it's, it's somewhat inaccurate here. So I'm gonna put some lavender into that dark wash. I'm gonna grab some of that white paint again, get that creamy kind of consistency I'm looking for. And I'm gonna to try to move quickly here. Now, <clears throat> I may have to darken this up later because remember this, this uh, line we have back here, our horizon line, it's still a bit wet. And so it's gonna weaken my, my color as I put it here onto the tree, but that's okay. All right, I'm just gonna whoop and just pull that straight out. When it comes to painting trees, be confident. Just be confident. I, I can't give you better advice than be confident or if you're, if you're not confident, pretend to be confident and move your brush in a confident way. You might be unsure of what's going to happen, but I can promise you that a confident brush stroke is going to look better on paper. Now you'll notice I just darkened the paint there a little bit and again darkened this kind of right side of my, my tree um, since our light's going to be coming from left, left to right. All right, I'm going to take some water, just pure water. My brush is just damp here. And I'm going to pull it just along the edge here so that that paint can kind of bleed over. Remember, my light's coming from left to right, so I'll have this nice, light, soft edge leading to this, this dark edge on the right. Okay? All right, this is coming together pretty well. I'm going to grab some of this dark paint. I'm just looking back here. My uh, door or whatever here kind of lightened up. I want to see if I can darken it a little bit. I may just leave it alone. It's not really the star of the show back there anyways, the, this tree is. Um, all right, let's get into some fun stuff. This is, this is, gonna, be, this is gonna be cool. We're gonna work on a big, powerful shadow here in our foreground. And we've got this tree in this shadow here, and it's gonna really frame in our cattle and this little house in the background. I think it's gonna look great. Now, I want this shadow to be dynamic. And what I mean by that is I want it to have a mixture of soft and hard edges, the same way this tree did. Look how nice this soft area is where you can see that the foliage bled down and then up here, it's very sharp. So you've got this, this dichotomy and it creates a lot of interest. The same way we look for contrast in light and dark in painting, we wanna look for that same contrast in our edges as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with an abstract, shape down here, kind of run it into, uh, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a dark area to represent this foliage, a line for the trunk leading into it, and then I'm gonna take my spray bottle and spray in there and let it kind of run. So let's see how it works. First thing I'm gonna do though is I am gonna get a cooler color. Even though our, our ground is, is very warm, I wanna have a nice, dark, cool color. I wanna get that I'm looking for contrast always. Contrast in tone, contrast in temperature, contrast in shapes. That is how you get an interesting painting. All right? All right, it's very blue. Let's, uh, I'm gonna wet this just a little bit. And you really just gotta go for it here. So I'm just going to, I've got kind of a flat brush here. And you, you just gotta go for it. I'm gonna get some darker paint. Trying to move quickly here. I want to leave some gaps of light. All right. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to mine this up. I'm going to run this right in like that. Okay. Again, just working here. Just working. I want to keep my brush strokes confident, as confident as I can. Maybe just a little bit of texture there. All right, then I'm gonna spray directly into that shadow. And now I'm gonna start picking up some really dark paint here. I wanna see this thing, I wanna, I wanna see it run. Let's put it right here as well. I just, I'm looking for that interest here. I wanna see this thing open up a little bit. All right, let's spray the top here. I just want to let that paint just, just pull down there. All right. So we're getting somewhere here. I'm going to soften up these, these top edges. All right. 
Need to connect this a little bit better. Kind of through there. Let's add some more dark areas. Okay. All right. This is coming along. This is coming along. I'm going to grab this brush here and just do a little bit of dry brush work here in the background just to give these cattle some grass and things they can they can munch on. Now, I gotta tell you, I'm a little bit disappointed in the way that shadow worked out. Something that you always need to do, and I, I talked about this, is in order for there to be contrast, there's gotta be light next to dark. And when I sprayed that, it made this whole dark clump, but with no cuts of light coming through it. I need to have both light and dark in that area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this paper towel and I'm going to, I'm going to blot out that area. I, I did not like the look of that at all. And I always hate to do that when I'm, when I'm working on a painting on camera, but I think it's important for, you know, you as an aspiring painter to know that, you know, A, everybody messes up, but B, when you mess up, how do you fix it? How do you, you know, get back to where you're going? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let this dry and we're going to come back and give this one more go on the shadow. And then we're going to finish this painting up. All right, we are back and we are going to try to fix this shadow. It's always easier if you're running into a situation where you don't like what you see. As long as you're keeping your paper wet, you can use a paper towel to dab and fix things, but then you want to take a step back, let it dry, compose yourself, and move back in and try again. All right? So let's give this another shot. I'm going to mix up a dark, cool color. All right. And what I think I'm going to do instead, I'm going to pre-wet that slightly so I don't have to come in later and spray things. All right. So that is nice and cool. I'm going to take this trunk here and just pull it right across. And then what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to try to use the side of my brush in a similar fashion that I did with the foliage here. I'm going to just make some abstract lines and right there, done. That looks 10 times better. And oh, I'm going to do one thing here. I want to add just, just a little bit down there. And again, same thing where I'm using the side of my brush. Perfect. All right. And you know what else? I'm going to throw that on there. Perfect. Now, the reason that that shadow looks good and the other one did not is that this one I was able to keep light within the shadow with this foliage I've got a dark shape and there's light piercing it so there needs to be light breaking through that shadow as well and when I sprayed it it uh, it kind of just bled completely and filled up the entire area I'm just darkening that bottom line just to give us a solid frame there on the bottom. Okay, I think that looks excellent. Now, let's finish this up. So, I'm gonna grab my little brush here. I'm gonna grab my white titanium gouache. There we go. And we're gonna add a few little highlights here and there, okay? All right, let's just touch the backs of our cattle here just to put a little light on their on their backs you'll notice here that i kept this large group of pat cattle together whenever you can join shapes together they're always easier to paint when they're isolated like this they always need to be a bit more um, a bit more accurate now i'm going to put a little gouache on that left side of our tree there okay and I'll tell you what, I may just, just lighten that just a touch, okay? And then I'm going to add just a few little 
little dots and things here. And I don't really have any item in mind when I'm working along this, this back line here. What I'm looking to do is to busy it up and create a little noise back there. Just some highlights and things to let people know that there's stuff going on and it really helps kind of fill in your scene. I'm gonna put just an edge there on that. Okay. I think that looks I think that looks very nice. Alright, let's put a signature on this and talk about what we did well, what could have been done better. Just real quick before I do that. I'm gonna darken up on these cattle here. Just some of their lower halves. Right? They'd be in shadow. I've got the dark on the back and a little bit lower towards the bottom. I think that'll help. I just want them to pop a little more. Okay. That looks very nice. That looks very nice indeed. Okay. Sign it, and then let's talk about it. See what we could have done a little bit better. Uh, just looking at it while I'm getting this ready. Um, I mean, obviously, I think that shadow could have been better had I had fixed it the first time around. I think it would have been a little cleaner, but I think that we were able to save it. I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, upset with our, our final result, um, especially knowing the situation that we were in. Let's see if we got a good clean line. It looks very nice. Okay. All right. What would I like to improve on? I think those cattle could be a little bit cleaner. They look just a little bit blobby to me, which is, is fine. I, I wanted to keep them abstract. They're more of a, a background item anyways. This, this tree was really the most, most important part of the painting which I, I think it looks, I think it looks nice. Um, <clears throat> what do I like though? I think our background looks excellent with this mountain here. We've got some faded areas. It's a nice solid tone and color. We were darkened along the horizon. Our foliage looks excellent. Again, already touched on the shadow, so I won't talk about that again. Um, yeah, other than that, I, I think this looks I think this looks great. So if you stayed with me to the end, I really appreciate it. I hope you learned something. And if you like this demo, it's going to be posted at the end of the week for sale in my store. Um, yeah. Other than that, remember to keep on painting. Thanks.